Okay, good evening everyone. It's after 7. We're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, are there any items added to the agenda by unanimous consent? Any items to be added to the agenda? None? We'll need a motion to approve the agenda. It's been moved by Councillor Boucher. Is there a seconder? Second by Deputy Warden Martel on discussion. Questions, Questions call. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. On to item three, which is review of the November 12th Committee of the Whole Minutes. Is there any errors, omissions, or? It's been moved by Councillor Boucher and your mic, Deputy Warden. The items added. Okay. In the item under items added, you have moved by Councilor Boucher, second by Deputy Warden uh, McLean. Should be Martel. You know what? I missed that. That's for the minutes you're talking. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, was that actually? Deputy Warden Martel, or was that Councillor McLean? Does anybody remember? I believe it was. Okay, yeah. so Councillor McLean. Okay, well, it should be Councillor McLean. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll make that change. Okay. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Boucher uh, to accept the minutes with the change. Mr. Seconder? Yeah, second. second by Councillor <laughs> McLean. <coughs> On discussion. Question. Questions call. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. On to item four on the agenda, which is presentations. Our first presentation will be uh, Joshua Nicholas, Chief Wilbert Marshall, and I don't. Councillor <laughs> You, have to, you just say your name and when the, when the mic turns on. So just hit the kind of the right hand side of the red dial on each, each mic. Right, right hand side on both of them, and I'll put them on. And the other one. Good. Now you can state your names just for the record. Uh, my name is Josh Nicholas, the okay. MPAL for Bulletic. Robert uh, Marshall, Chief of Bulletic. Councillor Blaine Murray. Okay, you can start. Uh, <clears throat> I believe we have it on the screens there, so you guys can go through it. Oh, yeah. laptop. How would I change it? Just going to this side. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we're here um, to talk about the Nova Scotia Mi'kmaq Summer Games. I had the pleasure to talk to you guys about this back in 2014, and it's been six years since, and there's been so many summer games in between, and we're very happy to host again, this time not for the first time in many years. So we're looking forward to it, and we came here to talk about uh, the games and, you know, and some financial support that we can get from the county. So uh, first off, like our first slide, we have our name. You know, the mission is to inspire youth and young adults to believe in themselves, achieve their dreams, and unite with all Indigenous communities to share and learn Mi'kmaq culture and traditions. Josh, you guys want to advance the screen? So the well, this is for this one. Yeah. Oh, you're on that one. I have okay. notes. Okay, I just thought yeah. that you went to the other one. Yes. Yeah, um, pretty soon. <laughs> and the vision is to be a stronger First Nation community whose spirit is raised by its passion for sport and Mi'kmaq culture. The values, team, trust, excellence, sustainability, growth, and unity. The history of the games. You know, just back in uh, 2009, all the chiefs, including our chief here, uh, began to talk and then wanted to have the games come back and you know I don't want to bore you guys with too much of that it's been uh, 10 years um, it's been six Mi'kmaq hosting nations so that's us in Cape Breton or Unamagi with uh, Millbrook First Nation as the other uh, all 13 Nova Scotia bands come in and we participate two from Quebec uh, I guess Quebec and Listigouche 
and it's 20 plus events going on here. So promoting health and wellness with all our communities year round, particularly amongst our youth. This will be achieved by year long preparation for the games through training and practice sessions. So we do work on it together in our communities to yeah. help. You got it? Uh, the cultural significance is uh, it's a big thing about the games. It said our people have a chance to be able to come together through sport and entertainment and you know really get to, to be there for each other and you know, there's nothing better you know like a lot of people like to you know it's the games people a lot of people don't participate but they love to watch their grandchildren their children their friends and you know we have over was well, about three to four thousand people come into our communities or our community and an extension the other communities you know it's celebrating our culture and I just wanted to read you guys an excerpt of um, Clifford Paul, who was the UNIR's uh, Moose Management Coordinator. I mean, I just think this is really what I think Summer Games is about. The return of the Summer Games is bound to happen. For those of us that attended the games with our parents, we want to ensure that our children and their children will get to experience the greatness of those former days. I am extremely proud that our communities have not let go of this and are willing to bring it back. People from my generation and my parents' generation are sure to be excited about this. Aside from all the nostalgia associated with the summer games, the opportunity for our people to gather fosters an immeasurable amount of goodwill and friendly competition. It will be a great feeling when our chief, Terry Paul, reads the summer games, scrolls, and announces, let the summer games begin. You know, that I think is very important. This came out was uh, 2016 and member two. But I just, it lived with me and I thought it was something that was good. But like in Richmond County, we are Richmond County. We do, you know, use, we need Richmond County to, to put this off, like to pull this off. Without our neighboring community, we cannot, can even think about it because we need um, the restaurants, the, Accommodations. We use uh, River Bushwa's softball field. We use St. Peter's baseball field and East Richmond Education Center gymnasium. You know, a lot of stuff goes on, and we, we just are not big enough to, to be able to, you know, to, to pull it off. You know, and then with the help of Richmond County last time in 2014, um, with the 20000 that we got, we're able to help um, renovate and renew our second baseball field that we have near our school, which is being used by Mi'kmaq Way School now. So that was a, a tremendous thing that we got to use and have. You know, it's a, it's a big thing when our fields are still not just used. They're not Budledek fields. They're Richmond County fields. And when people come in and ask us for our fields, we're, our answer is always a yes, 100%. You know, just like how you guys welcome us into your areas too, as well. You know, like we need, we need the help. We get it, and we're very, very proud to have that. You know, and it's about capacity building. You know, this time around, um, our main field, the one that you drive by, that's right next to the ESO. Uh, she served our community for many, many years. Just getting a little wear and tear on her, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to bring that back to its former glory. It's a fantastic field that helped me growing up, you know, saved me playing fast pitch. And this is something I want to be able to have that would keep living after the games and be able to afford my kid and everyone else's kids in the future. So I think that's the kind of the help that we're, we're looking to, to get from Richmond County. And uh, the collaboration, too, as well, because as the games grow, and, you know, there, there's just so much, like, you know, it is the Mima Summer Games in, in Bolodek, but it, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's our neighboring communities. You know, I look forward to, you know, being able to, like, uh, get some local musicians and artists within our communities in Richmond County. You know, highlight them as well. You know, celebrate in our cultures. Not just one. There's many more living here and who are just as proud as we are. At celebrating what we have. The economic impact, it's huge. We, we don't uh, get most of it. 
It, it's our neighboring uh, St. Peter's who just cleans up in that department. But that's fair because they do have those facilities. And without those facilities, you know, we wouldn't, we couldn't do this. You know, we cannot do this alone. It's with the partnerships of our neighboring communities that we're able to hold these games. I believe this is a great chance for Richmond County to shine. And, you know, we love our municipality and we want to want to be able to keep shining and showing that with it and the help that you guys can give us is uh, paramount to that. So once this happens, you know I mean, like uh, already we, we rented out all of Joyce's motels. And so that means the Inn on the Canal, Yellow Seabird, everything's just going to be sold out because a lot of people start, it's now when they start um, reserving their rooms. So it is, uh, we're very proud to be able to share that with our, our municipality as well. It's a decade of success, you know, started in 2010. You know, as it went through, you know, 2010, member two, then it was Wama Cook, Essasoni, Wego Ma, Bodledek, Millbrook, and the cycle uh, begins again. You know, we're very happy to have it in 2014. And, you know, I mean, I'm always about making this a game that really have a Bodledek feel, but also to a Richmond County feel as well. And that's going to be my spin to the games this time is to kind of really reflect and show everyone, you know, what we all have here. You know, we have the best uh, municipality around. And I'm not just saying that. And uh, we have right here uh, a video. And uh, I just wanted to show just a little bit of it because uh, I think it is, it's, it really shows the love of the summer games. And uh, if you would like to play it, Yvonne. Welcome to Eskazonia First Nation, largest Mi'kmaq community east of Montreal. We're proud host for the Nova Scotia Mi'kmaq Summer Games here on August 19, 2026. My community is trained to get ready, so let's go check out some, uh, some athletes. Come on, man, come on. Two more weeks, two more weeks. Come on, dog, Summer Games coming. Come on, Joe. How much is this? How much? Turn pounds. I can lift that, maybe. Five shorties, young, young fellas. How it's done. <sighs> Need more weight. Next sporting event we're doing is called CrossFit Functional Movement. One of the things you gotta start working on, training these guys to do. Put some muscle up, man. Come on. Oh, yes. We will also have arm wrestling. A tough man, tough woman sport, also for the youth. And these guys have been training hard. Watch out, Chris. Ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. <coughs> During the games, we will have grappling, and we make sure we're prepared. Just look at the wall. It's good that we have uh, grappling. Back in my day, you know, we had wrestling, WWF. So let me show you how it's done. Every single night we're going to have live entertainment, all local talent, we're going to have uh, youth dances, adult dances, we're going to have Superman on a Friday night. As you see, uh, that's a promo video and that was uh, Chief uh, Leroy Denny in Escazoni and you could tell by the, the excitement that he has and, and that's what it's about, you know, and, and I, I show it because uh, this is a yearly thing where the Chiefs come out and they put on a really cool videos. And uh, we got some plans for our Chief to put on a super cool video. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and this is something that happens every year. And this, is, and this is a part of the games. You know, I mean, like we have our Chiefs to come out and, you know, I could sit here and show you guys the rest with uh, 
all the other Chiefs, and they're hilarious. <laughs> but it shows the love that we have for our games, and our leaders are 100% behind us. You know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. Josh, that video seemed to link when I watched it. It <laughs> seemed there was other videos of day one, day oh, five. Oh, that's a big part of our games, so too, is that, that we, through the games as we well. live stream all our fast pitch games. Uh, we have updates uh, so that all the people who can't make it can see you know, what's going on, see if they can see who's winning the medals. And it's a, it's a big part of our games now, not when we did it last time in 2014. This just started happening. But in our games, we're going to have live streaming on our number one field and have updates across uh, all the days of the games. I think we changed a few things around also. The medal count. We don't have a medal count no more. But we just went to kids to participate, really. Nobody's okay. first, nobody's last. So you're speaking of a medal cup for each event? Exactly, yeah. Okay, you're but, eliminating that. But by, help, uh, Richmond, by uh, help, Richmond County helping us with this, like we use the, the ball field's been used for. I drive by there in the evening. And it's not just our kids. It's kids from the surrounding communities also using it. Yeah. Like, who's playing today? Like, you don't know who's going to be there. We, don't, yeah. we never, ever say no. Yeah. Nighttime, daytime, there's uh, kids from St. Peter's and all that. They're using it. They just book the ball yeah. field or sometimes they just go play ball. And it's, it's yeah. good. You see, the, it's nice to see the interaction. Like we're pretty close with the with Soldiers Cove and St. Peter's and along that area. Well, they're always there now. One time it was never like that one time. Mm -hmm. But this is the reason why you know we want to be part of a. You, know, you guys are a part. Of it. We are in Richmond County, so that's the big thing, really, to get the kids uh, interact. So is it mainly um, like the kids from St. Peter's participate as well in the games, or is it? No, that's just that's just after. Events? Like when the, when the summer games are over, make my summer games. But they do come. They look, and sometimes they sometimes they don't watch. We yeah. offer our field we to offer the, the fields and mosquitoes and <laughs> all the ones that are. Um, or the lob balls for them. Sometimes they use it in the. They'll use our fields. It's like, right ahead. It's Richmond open to them. Right? Cougars. That's over there. <laughs> so they come down. But it's open to anybody. Like we we don't say no. We never say no. Okay. But the one thing about the game, Sue, is that uh, everyone is invited to all our nightly entertainment that we'll have going on. From Tuesday right to uh, Saturday, we have nightly um, music. Um, what is, it? is that free? Talent show. It's free. It's, it's free. free. It's free. It's free. Everything that's there, like to come out and just Held relax. at the same place every evening? Yep. Okay. We'll have it down at, um, I think we haven't decided where we're going to have our main stage yet, but it will be in Bullock and we'll try to promote that as much as possible. You know, last year they had classified playing as the, the main event on Saturday in uh, Wagoma, and it was just huge because it was free. You know, that's what we try to offer is it's, it's all free. We do share costs with our communities, but it, it's such a, a massive event you know, that, you know, we do need a lot of support from Especially, all Especially, yes, we've got the St. Nance mission going on. Usually it's back to back. We're just so... That's in August, that, isn't it? Yeah. So, sometimes in August. Are, in July or sometimes yeah, it's in August. And so you're doing these in August as well? Because you did them July the last time. Sometimes it happens. Whatever the last Sunday of July, the 26th. Uh, yeah. But it's usually back to back almost. So the games okay. themselves are for the Councilor Bushy, your, your mic. Yeah. yeah. Is there any more questions? Just but uh, on everybody's mic on, so. But the facilities always after the after we're all done, the facilities are there for seven years. Like everybody uses them, like the surrounding areas okay. use their ball fields and everything. But we never say no; they always use them. Sometimes they use the two ball fields at the same time because they got a, they have a ball turn because our our fields are kept up. We always mow the grass. We always make sure it's done, and they know it's ready, so they just go use them. Yeah, that's what's happening to a lot of our fields. They're not being. Huh not being taken care of. No, our, our, our fields are taken care of, so I mean, we don't mind people, they, they yeah. use them all the time. Customer McLean? Yeah, um, just, just a couple of points. One is that on the entertainment front, I know Richmond County is certainly full of lots of amazing talents, um, and um, you, cert you have the luxury here as well of, of having uh, it broadcasted throughout the entire county and, and certainly other parts as well, so if there are people who may be interested in volunteering their services or anything like that? Is there a contact, name and number that folks could uh, reach out? And When we are ready, uh, I would like to work with uh, Talil 
and be able to put out something that people will be able to contact us and you know be able to sh see what we, what everyone has to offer and you know it's like I said we we want to do it different this time and you know really promote our neighbors. The so. most expensive part of the thing is usually renting the stage. Like the excuse only they get to keep renting, they lend them the stage every year. Okay, and that costs. So that's a that's a big uh, yeah. I feel what it costs. Yeah. Huge. Twenty thousand something to rent that stage and get all the bleachers and everything. Yeah, it's expensive. Uh, at, at the end of the year, it's costing us about, jeez, I don't even know how much it costs. Like three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. Well, and interestingly enough, like we we just had uh, we just had a meeting prior to to this committee of the whole meeting and. Um, much of the focus and conversation was in around Unamagi and um, collaboration and partnerships and five, you know, our, our five Cape Breton municipalities working closely with the, mm. with the five band councils. So I, I think that this is a, just a step in the right direction. So I would Maybe be happy have to... have a talk with the Breton getting a stage. <laughs> <laughs> And just one more thing. So the the date, uh, like second, third week of August for for a full week. Uh, right now for the games, it'll run from uh, August 16 to August 23. Um, we have a golf tournament which is uh, held in Dundee, which will be from the 15th to the 17th. Okay. So those are still part of the games. It's just we kind of put them off to the side a bit so that those people can still uh, participate in the games. We try to use all the venues in Richmond County. That's they're always telling us, use the lake. They said, no, we're from... We're this is ours. Yeah. <laughs> Wago Moss stole our, our like, home course, and they used it last year, and they're usually Bell Bay. And they realized that in Richmond County, we have a better one. So it's all right. There you go. That's what I'm telling you. you know. All right, thanks. But I like, late, later on, I like to see uh, even Richmond County, even the communities close by using the ball fields. Like, maybe have a tournament with the kids and all that stuff. Yeah. Why not? Yep. It's there. Use yep. it. That's right. Oh, wait. Is anybody else? Any questions? Councilor Gayash? Uh, yes, I see this is a big uh, undertaking, and I congratulate you, you people for taking the effort. Do you have a budget? I mean, uh, you must have a budget prepared, uh, what it's going to cost, and what are the revenues you're going to receive from this event? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have, well, they have the great privilege of having me organize the, the games. This would be my second one, and I work with every community since then uh, to be able to learn more, and, you know, we don't want to fall with the same mistakes that we did. With, you know, we, but there weren't huge mistakes, but we want to do this better and easier for us. You know, this is our second time around, and it's, uh, it's all planned out with our budgets, and we have um, about 80% of the money secured, and we're still trying to figure out to, to get the 20% that we need Another to. Another thing we do, we feed all the athletes also. Yeah. So nobody nobody doesn't, all athletes, we feed them. No, what I'm talking about actually, when you when you have an event such as this, you need to prepare a budget. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's yeah. gonna be expenditures and revenues you can spend. Uh, nothing is free. No. Oh no, sir. I mean, uh, you can say it's all free, but uh, when you're looking for money from Richmond County, yeah. the taxpayers are paying for it. And I agree with you, you have a ball field, it's a great thing and all the people do utilize There's it. There's two ball fields actually. Uh, we have the only lighted ball field in Richmond County, baseball field, that's in Petitburg. Uh, we've been established since 47. Uh, we coordinate activities there, especially during the summertime with the Acadian Festival. And we have other festivals in the area, as a matter of fact. We have the Irish Club, have their respective festival, which is part of the culture of Richmond County. We're a multicultural mm -hmm. county, and there are different cultures. We have the Scottish also. We have the schools that have their major event going on. And uh, we treat everybody the same way. Mm -hmm. And I can't uh, commit myself to anything until I see a budget, and I agree it's a great, great activity. There's nothing better than having summer games or any kind of games that you're going to prepare. And uh, and like I say, we have the Red Cat Ball Club, for example, that's been going on since 1947. And it's the major ball field in Richmond County, the only light ball field. We have baseball. Weights. Not a baseball field. No, softball. Oh, yeah. Softball. That's yeah. completely different. Yeah. 
we have the only baseball field that's not in Richmond County, and we support minor baseball, intermediate, senior, and also love ball tournaments. And we had many tournaments in the summertime that we have events, but we charge. I mean, there's an entrance fee, and the way we make our money is by uh, we have a canteen facility and we have different things going on in order for us to be able. It takes a lot of people in. Don't get don't get me wrong. Oh no, definitely. A lot of people enjoy it, and we have the motels that we book locally in Irishside. That's booked solid, and it's a great event during the summertime. But again, we don't support these organizations at all. They do it on their own. But I'd like to see a budget on your behalf yeah, anything to know you guys exactly need? where we stand and what you're looking for. If you have 80%. Yeah. Anything you guys need, I'm more than happy to provide you yeah. with whatever. But before I can make any yeah. decision or any kind well, we, of formal We judgment. wouldn't be making a decision. It would we, be we brought to budget. For, but we'll have to, yeah. Josh, but. you had provided that for us in 2014. Yes, I have. You had something kind of rough that I, I have here where you had. And it, it seems like all of the, uh, I guess, all the participating or the ones that have had the game seem to have given you money as well. They so do, it yeah. seems we yeah. cost share. Yeah, it's twenty five thousand dollars a year we For put into each, the games. Each one. Yeah, every, every year. year. Yeah. Okay, but well, we'll get that. We'll get before the, we oh, make definitely. decision. Whatever you guys need, yes. you know. And Counts. you know, to say it's like that, uh, we are the only fast pitch teams in Richmond County. You know, fast pitch used to be one of the hugest things that we had around here, and we're still holding on. You know, we're the only Too men's, late. female, and male and youth teams around. So that's a, a unique thing that we do have is that fast pitch is still strong with our community. Now, in in 2014, we have given you as well five thousand. We gave you a twenty thousand dollar donation, yep. and we gave you five thousand for upgrading some fields. Was it? No, it would just be the 20000 It might have been something okay. else. But yeah, there was some infrastructure money that was given for upgrading, and I don't know if it we was did, fields. We upgraded one of the ball fields, the old ones, which is still in great shape now. So we don't have to upgrade this year, but this year we could upgrade the lights in, in, in on one of your the highway. fields. Okay. So okay. So, so the ask, you don't have a number yet, or do you want the same as 2014? Is that the ask? Uh, 20000 20, is usually the, the, the benchmark okay. for all municipalities. Okay. And, you know. Councillor Boucher, did you have, have your mic was on? You're okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is there any more questions? Is your mic? I don't see it on. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for the presentation. And uh, we'll be expecting, I guess, as Councillor Gayash, you know, kind of a breakdown of what you had given us back in 2014. No problem. Of something. And, and this will be brought up definitely at budget. And, uh, you know, I want to wish you good luck for sure in the games. Uh, video, I guess, uh, as the chief from Escazoni, you can tell that he has a lot of passion, and we'll be waiting to see yours, <laughs> Chief Wilbur. You jump off a plane or something? <laughs> you give us twenty thousand dollars, we'll show you something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, Alio. Okay, on to item 4B, which is uh, Mayor Brenda Chisholm Beaton. Re, uh, not sure if it's the Gateway Project or the Alan J. McCagran Airport. Gateway. are on Brenda so all right I think there's a presentation floating around somewhere <laughs> it should be right there on the desktop I do have I do have notes I can follow it no, for okay. some reason oh great Yeah, 
that's it right there. Excellent. And Good. just this goes back and forth here. Perfect. All right. I'll wait for your cue, Warden. Whenever you want to start. Okay, right sounds here. good. Um, I'd like to start off uh, by thanking you all for your time and having uh, allowing for uh, an opportunity to come and present to you here today. Um, so I guess what I'm here to talk to you all about today is an island-wide collaboration opportunity uh, with regard to our island-wide gateways. Um, so I guess, Warden, you are partially right. There is a small element of this that in includes conversations with airports, but um, it certainly involves all of our gateways. So local leaders, stakeholders, and citizens, it's important uh, for 2020 that we play a vital role in determining our island's future. So the way that we do play a vital role in determining our future is through collaboration. So the momentum to work together has been fostered by Strait Area Chiefs, Mayors and Wardens, as well as our one Cape Breton Unimagi leadership and the leadership that has been demonstrated since 2012 and again in uh, 2018 when we came together as an entire island of five municipalities and five First Nation communities is very strong. And as you can see, I have listed um, all of our five First Nation and five municipalities that make up our one Cape Breton, one Unimagi leadership. So what are gateways? When we're talking about gateways, we're talking about all the ways that we are welcoming uh, visitors and citizens to our island. So we're talking about the Canso Causeway, the entryway, one of the primary entryways to our island. We're talking about highways, roads connecting our communities. We're talking about the Newfoundland Ferry, the Strait of Canso, and Sydney Ports. We're talking about rail to Point Tupper. We're talking about the J.A. Douglas McCurdy Airport and the Alan J. McCacken Airport. So there's the, the airport part of my presentation, Warden. <laughs> um, so of course, we all have a stake in ensuring that our gateways are strong and sustainable. So why are gateways important? If we collaborate to improve and diversify and develop our existing transportation gateways, it will benefit all of our communities, including citizens living here, businesses, and industries. Improving our gateways is a strategic way to maximize the number of visitors to our island. Strong, diversified gateways can serve as economic drivers for island growth beyond tourism now and into the future. If we work together in an integrated way, on improving our existing gateways better, connecting our island with other intermodal transportation assets, we are positioning our island for sustainable growth and prosperity. So gateways, improving our island gateways really isn't a new idea. Um, so the idea was discussed at our uh, second One Cape Breton, One Unimagi Summit. Uh, local leaders identified an interest in improving our Cape Breton Unimagi gateways, and this uh, summit was hosted by Chief Terry Paul and Member Two in April of last year. Uh, and it was done with the assistance of Engage Nova Scotia and also the Cape Breton Partnership. So at this, as the discussion continues, we have uh, been presented with our first potential gateway project that involves the primary gateway to the island, which is the Strait of Canso Gateway. So there is a lot of potential for a broader project with regard to the Strait of Canso Gateway. Uh, local island leaders have been interested in what the province of Nova Scotia's plans have, are for this gateway. Um, so in late November, Carla Arsenault, CEO of the Cape Breton Partnership and NI, uh, we met with Minister Lloyd Hines and NSTIR staff to inquire about the Rotary because we did hear um, indirectly that there was a tentative plan to, to renew the, the Rotary. Uh, we were told that the replacement of the Rotary is actually in early design, so it is, it is within the five-year infrastructure plan for the province, and that it is actually possible for um, for the province to, they're, they're, they're demonstrated a willingness to create a broader project since they're already investing in the replacement of the rotary. 
um, that provides us with an opportunity to leverage that money for a broader project uh, in partnership with federal government and perhaps other, uh, other provincial departments, um, as well as maybe private sector to create something uh, really great. So why is it important to bring all five First Nation, all five municipal leadership together for a broader project? Uh, well, we know that visitor trends uh, from 2018 show that 1.6 million people are arriving to our province via road connectors. That means 70% of visitors are arriving in vehicles to our province and thus our gateway here on Cape Breton, Unimagi. It's extremely important to the entire island with more than 9,000 vehicles using the causeway daily. So Cape Breton, we know and we're very proud that as as a world-class destination and it has been designated as such. So what is the welcome that we're giving 9,000 visitors daily when they come to our primary gateway? So these, these photos are from Google Earth and they are a little dated, but they basically tell the basic tale of what, of what welcome that our 9,000 visitors receive as they're using the, the, this Strait of Cancel Gateway. So what they are welcomed with is unclear design to be able to navigate or get to various destinations on the island. They're welcomed by poorly maintained properties and landscaping. Uh, they're welcomed by dated accommodations. Um, a federal post office building, and, and in fairness, this is this uh, shows a much kinder picture of the post office. If you look at it now, it's basically like patched of white, and all the paint is really <coughs> peeling off of the building. Um, also, a lack of landscaping, as you can see in that photo. Uh, properties in need of revitalization. Very poor access management, and a complete absence of active transportation infrastructure. Visitors, our visitor center is indistinguishable from any other visitor center across the country. There's no room for expansion and it lacks sufficient parking. So a visitor center to a world-class island, you definitely want to have something that stands out. And again, as our 9,000 users of the Strait of Canso Gateway, um, they see no invitation to return as they're exiting the island. So Cape Breton is a world-class destination and we now have a very clear opportunity to have a world-class gateway. So what are some next steps? So um, I've been uh, exerting some effort to mobilize our island leadership and that's including our five First Nation uh, communities and our five municipalities who, mo who I hope will be able to work with the province, the federal government, and multiple stakeholders, and Carla is very much part of that initiative um, with the Cape Breton Partnership, uh, to create a broader Strait of Cancel Gateway project. So this will be probably the first time in the history of our island that all five municipalities and all five First Nation communities are pushing momentum towards the same goal working with all levels of government to create a world-class gateway. So now that the province of Nova Scotia has confirmed their plans to do work to the Rotary, this is a unique opportunity for the island-wide collaboration, as I mentioned, but also working with all, all of our regional partners, stakeholders, the province, the federal government, the provincial investment along with other public and private investments can be used to leverage federal investment to develop a vital primary island gateway. Inclusion of streetscapes, beautification, facade, signage, wayfinding, access management, AT infrastructure, and, pos and the possibility of a new tourism asset or infrastructure. A chance to give a world-class tourism destination a world-class gateway so we can build on our strengths as an island. So the request is simple, and it's not going to cost you anything today. <laughs> the request is for Richmond County to join with our other one Cape Breton leadership, as well as the Cape Breton Partnership and other stakeholders as we mobilize to create a broader project to transition and revitalize our primary island gateway. The only way to be able to do this 
is going to be together. And this photo is, was taken at our second annual One Cape Breton, One Unimogi Summit. And uh, I used also a quote that generated from our very first One Cape Breton, One Unimogi Summit. And Stephen Gugu, uh, who is a councillor with Wegema, says, imagine our island as a ship. Our journey as captains and crew is to foster friendship, to build a relationship, to sail us to partnership. Finally, we grow our island with leadership. That's what I'm asking from Richmond County today, is to join our team as an entire island to push forward for a broader project for the Strait of Cancel Gateway. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Any comments or questions? Councillor Gayash. Uh, yes, Mayor Chisholm. I, just one question, I guess. Uh, will the gateway to the island that you call Cape Breton, will that include Richmond County, like St. Peter's and Almadan? Because I don't see any projects where Richmond County is included in that gateway. Well, that new rotary is just coming to Richmond. Got to go around <laughs> well, and get back to Victoria. <laughs> so, I so the, the the Strait of Canso Gateway, you're correct. It's not real estate that finds itself within the parameters of Richmond County. But make no mistake, that the impact of improving that gateway is going to benefit the entire island. So it may, may not be directly in Richmond County, but if we get this this piece right, and that's a, a very important puzzle piece with regard to growing our island yes. and positioning our island for prosperity. Um, so I, I would um, argue or suggest that um, every, every piece of, of transportation infrastructure, every gateway that we have here on the island of Cape Breton and Unimagi belongs and to, to us all. We all have an onus of responsibility to work towards improving our gateways across the entire island. The Strait of Canso Gateway is just one example on how we can work together. This is an opportunity that has presented itself so that we are in a position to leverage a, a project that we know the province is already in for about $5 million to replace the rotary. So we could leverage that with the federal government and, and perhaps with other provincial departments to create a broader project so that we are basically revitalizing that gateway which is hopefully going to welcome 10 or 12,000 visitors to our island, and they will disperse all over the island, benefiting everyone. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, what we really want to do is transition our visitors to residents. So I think part of that puzzle piece is making sure that that first impression that people see when they're driving across the Strait of Canso Causeway is a good one. Right now, it's not a very good welcome, and it's not at all a match. Uh, for being a, a world-class destination. Yeah, I guess we're saying the same thing. The thing I'm saying, the gateway. Right. I don't want Richmond County to be excluded. Oh, I don't no, want we, we absolutely don't want you excluded. Because That's why we, I'm here if tonight. you're going to put upgrades to a tourist bureau and then go to send them down Highway 5, 105, hmm. and not have no regards for Richmond County, then sure. where's the benefit for, for the residents in my area, the taxpayers in Richmond County and the island? Right. I, I so guess yeah. I want I want the gateway to be open and include sure. Richmond so, County. So I guess to respond to your statement, um, I would say that uh, one of the, the 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 probably one of the most important parts of being completely inclusive in terms of creating this broader gateway project is ensuring that we have the feedback of all five municipalities, including Richmond County. Uh, because we have a very diverse population uh, here in Richmond County of uh, First Nation Budladek community. We have Acadian communities. Um, we have a very diverse all across the island of Cape Breton in terms of culture and heritage. Having everyone at the table on our island in terms of leadership and stakeholders will ensure that the welcome that we are giving our visitors to that gateway is going to be inclusive. We, so we want visitors to know anything and everything that's on offer here on, on Cape Breton in Unimagi and straight Richmond rules will most definitely be included. That's why I'm here tonight because it's important that we are all at the table. With that said, I'm on your side. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
Is that all, Councillor Gayash? Yes. Deputy Warden. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Brenda, for the presentation. Uh, I guess you're 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 bang on. I think it's a great idea. Uh, as you as you mentioned in your, your your comments, James, is that it's better for us to be at the table to 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 steer and direct the ship than to let the province and the feds direct the ship for us, and then we end up what we have now. They'll go to do the cheapest route, and they're going to do whatever they think is best. But who knows best than, than we do? We're the people that live here. We, we're the people that control what's going on. So I think it's a great idea. I'm in full support. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, uh, Councillor Martel. Um, just to add to your comment, um, I will say that um, when Carla Arsenault and I uh, sat down with NSTIR and Minister Lloyd Hines, there was a, a, a really great sense of optimism uh, and a willingness for the province to, to work with the one Cape Breton leadership and the one Unimagi leadership. Uh, we got a wonderful reception. And um, Minister Lloyd Hines thought it was absolutely wonderful idea to take this opportunity and, and do something really great with it. So um, you're right. Um, if we're not at the table, and and this is like I authentically believe this, I'm going to go back to this, my leading slide, because I feel this with my heart and soul, that you know we need to play an absolutely vital role in determining our island's future. If we aren't playing a vital role, you're right. Someone else is going to play that role for us, and we might not like the results. So that's why we need to take a leadership role. And hopefully, we can do that together. Deputy Ward. Yeah, just the last comment I'll make is that at the end of the day, you know, you said you sat with Minister Hines, and he, feel, he felt that he was great for you guys to come there. And true experience with government in, over the years is that they don't want they don't want you to go to them with another problem. They've got lots of problems. Mm -hmm. They want you to go to them with solutions. Absolutely. So if we can get our act together and go to them with solutions on how this should be built, I think that they'll they'll respond positively. Absolutely. And, and we'll do great stuff. Absolutely. Any more comments, Brenda? You spoke of the VIC. Uh, what kind of reception are you getting from the government on that? Because weren't they looking to get out of them years ago? Oh, the Visitor Information Center? Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm not 100% certain with regard to what the long-term provincial strategy is for Visitor Information Centers. I know that there has been um, shifting desires with regard to which ones they, are, they have kept open and which ones they have, have closed or, or automated in a way that no longer needed uh, staffing. Uh, however, you know, I think that there is an argument to be made that having, having Cape Breton, Unimagi, as a world-class destination certainly would, uh, would serve as merit to, to have uh, a visitor information center. But my, my vision, and of course it will, the conversations will evolve as all of our leadership comes together to discuss exactly what should be at that gateway, um, I'm envisioning uh, a visitor information center that may not be at that location. Maybe it's maybe it's at a, a, a different location at that gateway. Maybe it's something that is green and maybe it's multi-use so that it's something that can be used all season long and not just open for the for the seasonally for, for the tourism shoulder. I'm envisioning something that is you know a collaborative building that's going to stand out. It's not going to be indistinguishable like the one we have now. Something that's going to create some wow factor. Um, we have a real opportunity, I think, and um, right now I feel like the stars are aligning with regard to all levels of government. Um, we have a, a member of parliament that that you know we've been discussing this idea with him. Very, he's very receptive. Um, and we have another member of parliament that represents the other half of the island, uh, Jaime Batiste, um, and we'll be discussing hit with him this plan. And I really feel like this just the stars are aligning to be able to do something really spectacular with this gateway. And at the end of the day, and I know I mentioned to, to, count, to, to James that this is really going to benefit all of us. And the more feedback that, all, that we can all contribute to this conversation means that we're going to have a super inclusive, fantastic, 
um, you know, unique uh, gateway that's going to be a much better match for the destination that we have, we have built. So, and I also feel that as we really put some time and energy into this gateway that really belongs to all of us as an entire island, is that it's going to be contagious across the island. Like, this is going to kind of set the tone going forward in the future so that we can work on all of our other gateways. So we can essentially work together as an entire island on all of the gateways that we have here as an island. Like, how are we welcoming all of our, our visitors and our citizens? And how can we do that better? How can we maximize the potential? How can we take our gateways and turn them into economic drivers so that we are creating jobs and keeping our youth here? I think that there's huge potential in developing our gateways. And the Strait of Canso Gateway is just step one in a long adventure of development for our island. Any more comments? Brenda, as was stated, uh, definitely uh, we support you on this. So I have no qualms about being involved uh, okay. with this. So you can just get in touch with me and That's whenever great. your next uh, gathering meeting so is. So I guess just to give you a little context, I was able to visit with uh, Victoria County. Um, I am on the docket for the agenda for Inverness County on Thursday. Uh, and um, I met with the Unamagi chiefs uh, in early September to talk about the Gateway Project. And uh, what I've been asking for is a, is a motion of support, tentative support, to, to be on board with all of our leadership. And once we have that kind of legitimized um, unity, then that is something that I think will, um, I guess, allow us to to uh, demonstrate to the province and to the federal government that we are a united front in this. So I guess I would ask project. for a motion if you'd be willing to do that. Deputy Warden. Yes, I'd be willing to make that motion that, uh, that this council uh, puts their support behind the, uh, the, uh, the project. Okay, it's been moved by <clears throat> Deputy Warden Martel, that we support, uh, that we give our support, I guess, to the leaders group on this island-wide collaboration up project, I guess, uh, involved with the gateway for Cape Breton Island. Is there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Boucher on discussion. Questions called. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. Thank you, Brenda. Okay, thank you so much. <coughs> On to item five, which is correspondence. Uh, we received some correspondence that's in your package from the Lennox Passage Yacht Club. Uh, Deputy Warden, do you want to speak to that? Or? Yeah, I met with the group from the Yacht Club, and uh, they've been uh, things that they, they got quite a few of their uh, their hoops that they jumped through are, are, are satisfactory. They got the, uh, the go ahead on different stuff, but then recently they had. Uh, thought that they were going to be able to reapply to a COA with the, uh, the normal application. Now apparently the uh, the, the uh, COA uh, strategy has changed a bit and they're saying that they need to uh, deal with the uh, development of Scotia. So they've had a, a chat on the phone with uh, the, the individual person from uh, from development of Scotia and they're hopeful that this will be the, uh, the, the, last, the last hoop that they need to jump through. Uh, so they're asking tonight for an extension of another year, and I think that uh, with all the work they've put in it and the, the frustration and the, the things they had to do to get to where they're at today, I'd like to make a motion that we give them another year's extension. Thank you. It's been moved by Deputy Warden Martel that we give the Lone Passage Yacht Club uh, one more year, so that would bring them to uh, March 31st of 2021. Uh, to spend the money on the uh, project uh, for the club. It's been seconded by Councillor McLean on discussion. <coughs> Councillor Bush. Thank you, uh, Warden Merchant. First of all, uh, we've already allotted this money two years ago for this project, so it's it's not anything new. 
yeah, it's not affecting the budget. We all know uh, what it's like to deal with uh, government bodies, and the environment is getting a little stricter all the time. Uh, the Yacht Club is a great uh, asset to Richmond County for uh, sailboats coming in, and now we're getting uh, commercial fishermen uh, docking at these yacht clubs because uh, there's no more wa wharfs around. Uh, the government's divested everything. So I certainly will support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vachet. Any more comments? Questions. Questions called. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. Item six is review of the checks. So we have the checks list for November and December 2019. So if you have any questions, you can email CAO or myself. Item seven, there's no items added to the agenda. We do not have in camera this evening. Uh, we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Been moved by Councillor Boucher. Is there a seconder? Second by Councillor McLean on discussion. Questions, Questions call. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>